was 6,000. How's that for a bearish call on the markets? We are at 12,876 right now. That is what Harry Dent, author of The Great Crash Ahead, is predicting by 2015. He says it's not the fiscal cliff, but another issue that will trigger the next financial meltdown. Uh, but CNBC contributor Ron Ansana is an optimist at heart, it says here. And he disagrees <laughs> with Harry's prediction. Both join us now to make their case. <laughs> uh, how are you, Ron? Hey, I'm fine. Uh, Why are you laughing, Bill? I, I, it's not the Ron and son I know, but, uh, but at, least you're, at least you're bullish in this particular case here. Harry, is this a technical retest of the March of 09 lows that you're calling for, or is something fundamentally going to happen that's going to send us back down there again? Well, again, you know, the U.S. St stimulated the last crisis with our subprime crisis, but the world was awash in debt, unprecedented debt, and demographic trends for the baby boom were set to slow. Now we got the same thing replaying with Europe set to be the trigger this time with their sovereign debt crisis. We've got even greater debt ratios now in most countries around the world, and demographics is getting ready to slow even more in the next few years. So I think, you know, we're, we're primed for a crisis, but this time it's going to be Europe that triggers it, not our fiscal cliff, not our Fed. And if we could take the whole world down, Europe can take the whole world down. And, and think of it this way. We've had two bubbles and now we're in a third one. Each bubble has taken us a little higher. Each crash has taken us a little lower. So 6,000 is simply the bottom trend line through those bottoms, including the 6440 in early 2009. And it's just a slight new low. It's not okay. anything that should be unexpected given the trend. Well, it's still, you know, half of where we are right now, and it's only a two-year no. period. Ron and Sana, take the other side of that. What do you think? Well, I, I think it's a pretty easy other side to take. I mean, in, in, with respect to uh, the fact that the United States economy is actually getting stronger, I do believe we'll get a deal not only averting the fiscal cliff, but also uh, getting us a big grand bargain on deficit reduction. We've seen a very strong pivot already from uh, the nation's leaders on that very point. I think Europe is going through a very painful period, but I don't think they're going to be responsible for a global crisis. And and I think if you look at the engines of economic growth, particularly here in the United States, housing is turning, manufacturing renaissance, a huge boom in conventional energy, technology also driving uh, growth here in the United States. I don't see the ingredients, which I did in 2007, and Bill, you could back me up on this, for a, a major decline. I would be far more bullish. I mean, you know, look, we're going to have a 5 or 10% correction around here, but I think that the, the fundamentals for the U.S. are quite positive in absolute and relative terms. I don't see us going back to 6,000. Harry, I mean, we would have to see an, a disintegration of the European Union, the Eurozone, basically, to, to uh, have that kind of an impact on the uh, U.S. economy, wouldn't we? Is that what you're calling for? Well, it, it, it's more than that. Even the U.S. economy alone is two economies right now. Eighty percent of people never feel we came out of the recession because they peaked in their spending. Their house is underwater. Twenty percent of people are college educated, very low unemployment rates. They benefited from QE and the markets rising back. They peak later. They peak in their early 50s instead of their mid 40s. They're due, the, the wealthier part of our economy that's still 50 percent of spending is due to tailor off. The demographics in Europe just go off a cliff for many, many years to come. Yes, you can have nice little things in the economy and stimulus, but you can't get older people to spend money. Wow. And Europe has the worst <laughs> problems because they have the worst demographics. Yeah, listen, listen, Robert uh, Malthus, the economist in Britain, uh, taught us that demographics uh, do not have a very uh, strong predictive value, and particularly when it comes to markets. Look, in 1998, Harry wrote a book saying the Dow was going to 35,000. Uh, in 2009, he wrote about the Great Depression that was ahead, and the S&P has gone up 110 percent off the lows, and the economy has gone to new highs in GDP, retail sales, and car sales have rebounded rather nicely. This, You're I running not, for office? <laughs> no, absolutely not. But I would not predict stock market trends based on some of the factors that Harry cites. Hey, and hey I Ron, would, yeah, you and yeah. this guy don't know what you're talking about. The correlation with a 46-year lag on the birth index with the economy and the stock market is unbelievable. We said in, in 1992 that the economy would top around 2007 we'd go into a 12 to 14 year downturn we predicted with demographics against the grain that japan would collapse from 1994 back in the late 80s and nobody saw that coming demographics is the ultimate leading indicator people do predictable things as they age and they peak in their spending at age 46 and they spend less the rest of their life you cannot fight that with a generation sure the size can. of the baby boom with stimulus no sure, you cannot sure you can't bet you only, on that in the next year 
You kind of happy, happy to bet it, but I, the thing Japan is... Japan didn't fight it. Ron, how did Japan's market do? Their baby J boom peaked in the early to mid-90s, and they've been down and lower lows in their stock market for years and years and years, despite and we've behaved $5 trillion nothing, in stimulus. And we behaved nothing like Japan. They started their quantitative no, easing programs. No, we're doing the same thing as no, Japan. No, we're not. We're not QE. remotely close. No. They I'm did not, endless not, QE. They, no. First of all, they were five years late to start the quantitative easing process, five years late to start yes. the zero interest rate process. But they've been doing Their it market ever since. They're doing it down. today. We have not gone straight down. In fact, our market has behaved radically different from that of Japan. So has our economy. 2008 they did not to go 2009 wasn't house. straight down? Oh, no, no, 2007 of October, 2007 to 2009. Down. It's was gone that? down and up and down and up for 20 years. Guys, 23 years. It's always gone lower. Question. How about a near-term question? How about a near-term question? The market is so focused on taxes right now, and yeah. we're looking at uh, anticipation of higher taxes, and so that has triggered so much selling. Do you expect more year-end selling? How much further does this market go down over the near term, going into year-end, given the fact that we don't know where tax rates are going to be uh, yet, and we're waiting on the fiscal cliff fix? Well, I, you know, I would bet that we have you know something of a 10% peak to trough correction here. Uh, and once the game gets a little clearer, and, and listen, I, I talked to one operative uh, that's close to the Obama administration today who suggests the president's willing to compromise if the other side is. I think they cut a deal averting the cliff, fiscal cliff. I think they do a Simpson Bowles style tax reform and entitlement reform package will be very stimulative to the U.S. economy, and baby boomers will continue to spend throughout their lives. They're going to work right. longer. They're staying in no, the workforce they won't. longer. I they will absolutely bet you will. That. They have to. They, <laughs> they have will to. not. Why, they won't. I will say they will not, and I will stand by that for the next ten years. Our okay. forecast, real quickly. I actually see the market rallying into year, and I do think the fiscal cliff is probably going to be dealt with. I see a crash after that, somewhere between December and February. I I think new, slower economy in the U.S. from baby boomers and more problems in Europe cause okay. us to start to go at down. Least we got an agreement to go up first. At least we got an agreement to go up first. Economy in 2013. All right, well, at least we got an agreement to the end of the year on the fiscal cliff. We'll stop right there on that one. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, thanks. See you later.